Concentration camps began to appear in the nation as soon as the well-known Adolf Hitler became the Germany's new chancellor. It is estimated Germany operated more than a thousand concentration camps on its own territory and in parts of German-occupied Europe, including subcamps, were set up within the Third Reich, and that millions died inside their barbed wire fences. They were used in some of the worst crimes the world has ever seen. Today, we associate them with the Holocaust and the horrifying persecution of millions of people. Several trials were held after the war to prosecute the people who worked in the filth camps. This is History Rediscovered. To support, please subscribe. In this episode, we discuss the execution of Stutthof's horrific female guards. After the Second World War, trials were held to bring the guards accountable for the mass murder, slaughter, and cruelties that took place inside the camp. One camp established east of the city of Danzig was Stutthof. The fact that several of the guards on trial were actually women, some of whom were quite young, startled many people throughout the world throughout the trial. After the trial, many of these received death sentences and were all executed at once. During World War II, the Stutthof concentration camp was the first camp to be established outside of German territory. It started operating on September 2, 1939. It was a camp connected to the ethnic cleansing of Poland where the top echelons of Polish society, including politicians, religious leaders, and intellectuals, were executed in the West Prussia region and the surrounding area of Danzig. The Nazis planned to set up prison camps for these inmates after the invasion of Poland, and lists of people to be detained had already been created before the invasion. It was initially a camp where civilians would be held, but after a massive expansion effort it resembled Dachau and turned into a labor education camp where captives would be made to perform arduous labor. The first detainees, roughly 150 of them arrived when the camp started, and they were Poles and Jews who were caught right after the war broke out. The number of captives quickly increased to over 6,000 within a few weeks, with nearly all of them initially being Poles. As the war dragged on, a considerable number of Jews were sent to the camp, and many more arrived from Auschwitz and other concentration camps spread throughout the Nazi-occupied world. 110,000 people from various nations entered the gates over the course of its years of operation. Jews from all over Europe were among the detainees, along with resistance leaders, Soviet POWs, communists, medical patients, and a host of other individuals. During World War II, the main camp at Stutthof also had over 40 other subcamps that it used, each of which housed a different prisoner and produced goods for a different company. Some of these businesses produced components for the German war machine while participating in the war effort and employing slave labor. An arms plant, for instance, was located at the camp, and later in the war, a Focke-Wulf aircraft factory was constructed there. The conditions in Stutthof were extremely harsh and nasty. Many diseases were prevalent inside the camp, and thousands of inmates also perished from malnutrition. Selections were carried out as a result of a few significant typhus epidemics that caused the demise of thousands of inmates in 1942 and 1944. Prisoners who were sick or too weak to work would be chosen by the SS commanders and doctors during these selections, and dispatched to the nearby tiny gas chamber. The camp did carry out executions, and many Polish resistance members who were held captive were shot there. As previously reported, a tiny gas chamber was present and mass executions of captives using Zyklon B started in June 1944. Prior to the camp's evacuation, an estimated 4,000 captives, predominantly Jewish women and children, perished in the gas chambers. There are several instances of the camp's guards punishing detainees inhumanely, as they were highly vicious. Despite being only 24 when she was executed, guard Jenny Wanda Barkham was infamous for her horrific treatment. She often beat women prisoners to death and was one of those who chose which inmates went to the gas chambers. Many guards, including Barkman, were infamous for their inhumane treatment of captives, with many of them being clubbed and beaten to death. It was estimated that 65,000 inmates perished at Stutthof total, with many of them also drowning in the muddy, swampy interior of the camp. Lethal injections were used by camp doctors to kill a large number of sick and injured prisoners inside the infirmary. Even claims that the SS killed hundreds of captives solely for the purpose of making soap, and used the human fat from their corpses to create soap were made. As a result, Stutthof had a shockingly high death toll, executions were common, and the guards were infamous for treating prisoners brutally. Suffering persisted even after the camp was ordered to be completely evacuated in late January 1945. A total of 50,000 detainees, mainly Jews, were ejected from the camp. 
a total of 5,000 of them were forced to walk from the camp to the Baltic coast, where they were forced to enter the sea before being shot randomly by guards brandishing machine guns. Some prisoners marched in the direction of eastern Germany, but they were stopped by the Soviets and forced to turn around and head back to Stutthof. Many people perished on the death march as a result of the horrifying treatment they received from the SS guards, the fact that they were given little to no food, and the fact that they were made to walk in the bitterly cold winter weather. A few months later, the remaining captives were transported from the camp by boat, and further prisoners were shot before being thrown into the water. It's estimated that 25,000 prisoners perished during the Stutthof evacuation. On May 9, 1945, it was finally freed, although only about 100 prisoners, those who had fled the death march, were discovered there. Following the Second World War, there were numerous war crimes tribunals, including the Nuremberg Trials, which sought to convict the Nazi Reich's top officials. Nonetheless, several lesser-known trials, some of which were referred to as the Stutthof Trials, were held to punish those guards inside the concentration camps. Trials were held in order to hold the guards and administrators accountable for the crimes committed at Stutthof. The series, which started in 1946 and ended in 1947, consisted of four trials. One problem was that, despite the fact that Stutthof employed almost 2,000 SS personnel, only 72 SS officers and six female overseers were prosecuted. The first trial was the six women who had been charged with being Orfseherins at the camp, and it was held in Gdansk. These women were Anna Bailhard, Wanda Klaff, Ewa Paradise, Gerda Steinhard, Jenny Wanda Bartman, and Elizabeth Becker. It was remarked that the women in particular did not appear to take the trial very seriously when witness testimony, and a great deal of evidence were heard inside the courtroom. In particular, it was reported that Jenny Bartman seemed more self-conscious about her hair, grinned while horrifying evidence was presented, and even flirted with the security guards within the courtroom. Jenny Bartman, Elizabeth Becker, Wanda Klaff, Ewa Paradise, and Gerda Steinhoff were among the defendants who received death sentences, and a bailhard received a five-year prison term. A handful of men were also given death sentences, and they were all scheduled to be executed on July 4, 1946, along with the ladies. All individuals who had been sentenced were carried to Gdansk on that day, and in particular to the Biskupia Gorka, a sizable hill in that section of the city. They had been driven up the hill while under the protection of Soviet officials. Over 200,000 spectators lined the area near the gallows at the location, where a sizable crowd had gathered to observe the events. Very large here were the gallows. Due to their enormity, it was possible to hang two of the convicts on one gallows and even three on the central gallows. They were also quite tall, so the audience could readily see the bloody events. The ladies and men who were executed that day, starting with Jenny Barkman, were all placed onto trucks and backed up to the gallows. Barkman was the first person put to death on that day. She was dressed simply and stood by the gallows at five o'clock. Her arms and ankles were tied as she was mounted on the truck, and a noose was hung over the wooden framework. Final preparations were then completed as the hangman put the rope around her neck. When the truck abruptly pulled away, leaving Jenny Barkman hanging in the air without anything to stand on in front of the large audience, she was facing them. While she was hanging there, she twitched her hands and feet, dropped a shoe, and battled for breath before going limp and passing away. The eleven people who were put to death that day on the hill were all women, and she was the first of them. The men were subsequently put to death close to the gallows while the five women were left hanging. With eleven victims dangling from the enormous gallows, the public spectacle was enormous. Many people who were on the hill during the executions got a tiny measure of payback for the atrocities committed at the Stutthof concentration camp. Inside the walls of the camp, a great number of individuals endured terrible suffering and perished, and all of the guards who were executed were slain for their inhumane treatment of detainees. The duties played by the women who were executed varied inside the camp, but they all had a similar trait. They were content to take out inmates with their own hands or choose which ones would die in gas chambers, causing great pain in the process. Thanks for watching.